Tori to talk about everything that's been happening with HBO Max and Warner Bros. Discovery. A loaded subject right now, and I'm excited to learn what CEO David Zaslav has cooking over at Warner Bros. Take it away, Tori. During Syllabus Week, I found myself having a lot of time to scroll aimlessly through Twitter. And I found one infographic that not only made me pause my scroll, but honestly dropped my jaw and upset me a little. During a real Warner Brothers Discovery meeting, they used this infographic to explain the differences between their two premier streaming services, HBO Max and Discovery Plus. Now, besides the obvious problematic implications of this graphic, which we'll get into later, it made me want to explore the current state of Warner Brothers Discovery and perhaps find a purpose as to why this graphic was made. So let's get started. After finally cementing itself as one of the stronger streaming services available, HBO Max has fallen off the deep end over the last month due to several controversial decisions from its parent company. Ever since Warner Brothers merged with Discovery, making David Zaslow CEO of both, massive budget cuts have been made across all aspects of the company. The, scuts, the cut started with two almost complete movies being scrapped from release and written as a tax write-off, meaning they can never be shown in the future. One of the two films was a sequel to the 2020 animated movie Scoob, while the other was Batgirl, starring Leslie Grace, J.K. Simmons, Michael Keaton returning as Batman, and Brendan Fraser set to play the villain Firefly. The movie was set to release on HBO Max, but David Zaslav's method of focusing on theatrical releases instead of streaming movies led to the only screening of the film being for cast and crew to watch before it's vaulted forever. Along with this, several shows on HBO Max found themselves canceled or kicked off the platform, including Close Enough, Infinity Train, several reality TV shows, and 200 episodes of Sesame Street. Reality and unscripted shows were specifically targeted during these cuts after a company earnings call showed the future of HBO Max focusing on scripted male content, while Discovery Plus would be focused on unscripted female entertainment. Due to decisions like this and the overwhelming amount of debt owed by the company, Warner Brothers Discovery has lost $20 billion in market cap, causing them to delay all movies to 2023, except for Black Adam, Don't Worry Darling, with the second mentioned currently holding 38% with critics on Rotten Tomatoes. Now, while the company has bounced back from some of these controversies with the release of Game of Thrones sequel, The House of Dragon, along with sweeping this year's Emmys with 40 wins, stockholders, the company's CFOs, and myself are concerned for the future. I think a segregated and in some ways sexist infographic like this not only says something about Warner Brothers Discovery, but also about the current state of the industry as a whole. The IP struggle is sweeping the industry right now, with theaters putting majority of its emphasis on cinematic universes, prequels, and sequels. And it's almost redefining the idea of what a movie or TV show is. These IPs have to serve a specific focus, for example, leaning in versus leaning back, or appointment viewing versus comfort viewing. And I can't say I'm a fan of this idea. I'm a media consumer through and through. I'll watch Game of Thrones on my day off, put on an episode of Love Island to cool down after school, or sneak in an episode of Cobra Kai between classes when I'm bored. At the end of the day, to quote Keanu Reeves, I love movies, and I don't want them to change due to revolving studio executives or industry norms. And I really pray that with HBO Max, the new season of Euphoria doesn't get delayed because I can't wait any longer than 2023 to say all the crazy stuff Rue and Cassie have in store. But anyways, what are you guys' opinions on Warner Brothers Discovery? Let us know on Instagram at sneakpeaktv.